Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will talk about making heat maps using ArcGIS Pro. Now, a heat map is a type of visualization that uses color to represent the density of points or the intensity of an attribute across a geographic area that uh, essentially help users to identify patterns and trends in their spatial data. Heat maps are very commonly used in GIS to show patterns of activity of distribution across a map and can be used to reveal special trends and relationships that might not be immediately obvious from a simple map. So in ArcGIS Pro, users can create heat maps using a technique called kernel density estimation. And this technique involves the density of points in a given area by convolving each point with a kernel function, which is essentially a mathematical function that uh, determines the weight of each point in the calculation. And the resulting density values are basically then represented on a color scale with hotter colors indicating areas of high density and cooler colors indicating areas of lower density. However, you do have the flexibility of playing around with these uh, different color schemes depending on your preference. So to demonstrate this heat map capabilities of ArcGIS Pro, I'm using a dataset called Crashes of New York City, recorded in year 2020. And you can see from this shapefile, each of these different points basically refer to a crash incident that happened on a particular day and during a particular time. Now, if you open up the attributes table, you would be able to see a bit more information about this dataset. For example, you can see the field headings, crash date, crash time. We also have things like latitude, longitude, and uh, we have some information regarding the contributing factor. And uh, over here we have the vehicle type, and we also have a column which indicates the number of casualties. So as you can see, we have a total of 74,577 records. So each row that you can see over here basically refers to one single record. So with this dataset, our task would be to convert this dataset into a heat map. And doing that is actually quite easy. Just make sure that you have selected this layer. After that, head over to Feature Layer. And under Symbology, you can go with the Symbolize Your Layer by Density. And under that, you can see that we just have one single option, which is this heat map option. And as soon as you click on that, you will see that your points map will sort of get transformed into a heat map based on these default options that you see right over here. And just like that, you can see that we managed to create a heat map. Now there are actually a few things you can adjust to influence the way how this heat map gets displayed. So the first thing that I would do is maybe pick a different color scheme. So depending on your preference, you can actually decide to go with a color scheme like this. So, so let's say just in this case, I would uh, pick maybe a different color scheme, uh, something like this. And right down here, you can see how we can interpret this color scheme. So the color gradient basically varies from blue all the way until white, going across various shades of purple, red, orange, yellow, and all the way until white. So by using this sort of color bar, we can immediately identify the spots which are corresponding to higher densities, as well as the areas which are corresponding to lower densities. So if we come back to the map, you can see that this area right over here gets colored almost in white. And with that, we can sort of attribute this area to be an area with very high density in terms of the number of reported crashes based on this data set. And when it comes to this method, you can see that if I zoom in, while having this method to be constant, what happens is that, as you can see over here, the density definition remains constant regardless of the zoom scale that you are using. However, if you decide to go with the dynamic, what happens is that each time you zoom in or out, it'll recompute the densities and sort of update the map each time you zoom in or out, which I think is quite helpful, especially when you want to zoom into one particular area and see how the crash densities vary in that area. And you can also influence this final map by adjusting this radius right over here. For example, if you go with a lower radius, let's say like five, you will see that the continuity of your map sort of gets hindered by that because now you're sort of restricting the radius of influence. So you wouldn't really be able to see that continuous smooth map just because we have instructed the program to use lower radius of influence. However, let's say if you would stick with a relatively larger radius of influence, you will be able to get back that smoothened out map. 
just like this. And sometimes when you're inspecting a heat map, it would be quite handy to see what's underneath. Because for example, from the map that you can see right now, it's quite evident that there are a number of the different spots which can be easily identified and can be attributed to areas with higher crash densities. So for example, this spot right over here. And to see what's underneath this, as long as you're using a base map, what we can do is we can select the layer and head to feature layer again and we can increase the transparency so that way you would be able to see what's underneath so in this manner you are immediately able to see what sort of cities or what sort of localities are present underneath each of these different heat map patches and you can kind of zoom in and hone in on one particular area to get more information about that locality and as you can see, just because we are using this dynamic method, when I zoomed into this particular area right over here, you can see that it recomputes the density. And right now I'm almost able to kind of pinpoint certain junctions and certain localities where I could definitely say that relatively, these are the areas that are actually having a higher crash density in a certain locality compared to the other areas. And when interpreting possible inferences from maps like this, I think this capability of being able to sort of hone in a specific area can also come in handy because just by looking at this map, you might be able to maybe spot things like an improper design of highways or maybe the presence of certain unique ground infrastructure that potentially might be contributing towards these high crash densities around these areas if you maybe had those as separate GIS layers. You could easily overlay those information on top of this heat map and you would be able to make uh, those kinds of inferences quite easily. And finally, before we wrap up this tutorial, I would also like to let you guys know that if you have a specific uh, field by which you would like this map to sort of adjust its intensity, you can specify that under this weight field. Now, what do I mean by that? For example, over here, you can see that if I open up the attributes table, Right here you can see that I have a column called casualties. Now one might think that having high number of casualties should be attributed a certain weight, maybe a higher weight compared to a crash incident which basically has maybe a lower number of casualties. In that case what you can do is you can basically go over here and specify that field as well and it will reperform the density calculation based on this weight assignment. So for points which have higher number of casualties, it'll actually assign a higher weight. And for points which have a lower number of casualties, it'll assign a lower weight. And we could almost see a slight change in the map compared to what we had before when we didn't really have any sort of uh, weight assignment. So I guess that's about it guys for this tutorial. I hope you guys found the things that we discussed today in this tutorial useful. And if you did, show your support by hitting that like button and if you'd like to stay tuned for this kind of interesting GIS related tutorials, don't forget to click that subscribe button as well. And at the same time, we've got a number of different playlists in our playlist collection. So if you're interested in learning a particular GIS software like let's say QGIS or ArcGIS Desktop or ArcGIS Pro, you can always head over to our playlist and check out what we have for you guys in our tutorials. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon.